Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at one of the Rodecaster video's unique features that sets it apart from other video switchers, scenes. The Rodecaster video's scenes allow you to quickly and easily create complex setups using multiple cameras, graphics, videos, and images all at once. You can arrange all these different video sources in familiar ways, like picture-in-picture, or split screen configurations. But you can also create completely custom layouts to best suit your project. Once you've made your scenes, you can switch to them at the press of a button, just like with the regular video input buttons. You can switch between up to seven scenes using these dedicated buttons right here. This feature is a game changer as it allows you to construct advanced productions in a super intuitive way. There's two different ways you can build a scene and we'll walk you through them both. First, we'll take a look at everything the scene builder in Road Central can do, and then we'll show you how you can make a scene on the Roadcaster video itself. First up, let's take a look at the scene builder in Road Central. To start, make sure your Roadcaster video is on the same network as your computer, or connected via USB 2. You can check out our video on getting connected if you need help here. Open Road Central and select your Roadcaster video from the list on the left-hand side of the screen. Then, select Scene Builder. You'll notice that the Scene Builder is laid out just like your Roadcaster video's interface, with a few extra bits added to it. Before we dive straight into building a scene, let's take a look at these extra features. At the top, you should see the word Default. This is the name of your current show. You can use shows to quickly save and load all your settings at once, including all seven of your scenes. Clicking on the logo for your show lets you rename it and change its logo, as well as export it to your computer for safekeeping, or import one you've previously created. In the middle of your screen, you'll see your program feed if you're in instant mode, or your preview feed in studio mode. This lets you use Road Central to view your show if you don't want to use any external displays or monitors connected to your Roadcaster video. On the left-hand side is your media library, which shows you all the images, video, and sound files on your micro SD card. Click Add Media to browse for the files you want to bring in. These can be PNG, JPEG, WAV, MP3, or MP4 files. Once they're added to your library, click this media button here and simply drag your image, video, or audio files onto any of the seven buttons here. If you've imported a PNG file with a transparent background layer, like a title card or logo, you can add these as an overlay in much the same way. Simply click the overlay button and drag it onto one of the seven buttons. With overlays, you can click this size and position option here to place your overlay exactly where you want it and drag the sides to adjust its crop and drag the corners to adjust its size. Now you've loaded up your media buttons, you can switch to them in Rode Central or on your Rodecaster video, just like you would a camera. And you can use them in your scenes in the exact same way. Overlay buttons, on the other hand, behave a little differently. When activating an overlay, instead of switching to it like you would a camera, the overlay will appear over the top of your live program feed until you go and disable it again. This is perfect for lower thirds and similar graphics. All right, now you're a little more familiar with the scene builder, let's use it to create a scene. To start, click on any of the empty scene buttons A through G. This is where your scene will be saved. In this right-hand side menu here, you can choose to either start with a template or build your own custom layout. If you go with a template, you can click the layout diagram here to select from a range of pre-made layout options, including picture-in-picture, -picture, split screen, and a few more creative choices too. Once you've chosen a layout, you'll see these bars beneath it with letters A, B, and so on, as well as BG, which stands for background. These are the individual frames that make up a scene. Hovering over these frames will highlight their position in your main display, like this. Clicking on these frames lets you add inputs or media that you've assigned to your media buttons. So let's go with the background first. I'm gonna go with this one. And our inputs. Let's stick camera four on here. And our top down, camera two, right here. You can also drag and drop any images or videos from your media library on the left onto these bars to use in your frame. So I'm gonna swap out the background because I like this one a little bit more. You can do this even if you haven't loaded the media onto your media button. 
In the right hand bar here, you can also apply borders to all of your frames with adjustable size and color. Let's swap it out to white. And I'm gonna make the size 12. Now, if you wanted to create a custom layout rather than using a template, much of the process is the same. The main difference is that you get to set up your own frame layout. You'll see on the right hand side here, there's a button with a plus symbol. That lets you add more frames to your scene until you have as many as you need. Beneath the plus button, you'll see frame bars, just like you would with a template layout. Hovering over these frame bars and clicking this icon here lets you assign an input or media to the frame. Or you can drag and drop from your media library too. You can click and drag this icon on the left of a frame bar to reorder your frames, which lets you place certain frames in front of or behind others. When you click on any of your frames in the program screen here, you'll be able to resize, reshape, and move them around. This lets you lay out your scene exactly how you want to. You can click and drag the corners of a frame to resize it while maintaining its aspect ratio or you can drag the edges to crop your frame. Clicking and dragging from the middle of the frame allows you to move its position around the screen. You'll notice your frame has this information window here. This shows you the XY position of the top left corner of your frame, as well as the current width and height of your frame measured in pixels. If you want to get precise with your frame position and size, you can click and type in these fields. You can also click this icon at the left of the window to reframe your shot. You can use this to center your subject within a cropped frame, even if your subject is on one side of the shot. Once you're happy with the size and placement of your frame, you can move on to the next one and repeat the process until you've got a completely custom layout. Now that you've finished tweaking your scene, it's ready to use. There's no need to save it as it's all done on the fly. You can click reassign if you want to move your scene to a different scene button. But otherwise, you can simply start switching to any of your inputs and switch back to your scene. If you've built a number of scenes you'd like to keep using in the future, we recommend giving your show a name and exporting it to your computer using this menu up here. Now we've taken a look at the advanced scene builder in Rode Central. Let's see how we can quickly and easily build a scene using just the Rodecaster video itself. First up, building a scene behaves slightly differently in instant and studio modes. In instant mode, you'll be building the scene using your live program feed. This is great if you're setting up before streaming or recording your show or just want to create a simple scene live, like picture in picture. In studio mode, your scene will be set up in the preview feed right here, which means that you can set it up while something else is being sent live to the program feed. This is great if you need to quickly make a split screen or picture in picture layout while you're live. Check out the video linked in the description to learn more about instant and studio modes and the basics of switching. To walk you through this process, we'll be using instant mode. So we'll be working in the program feed only. To start, switch the input or media you want to use into program and then press the multi-source function button. Now you'll see a picture in picture layout on the screen. Tap the top section of the screen and use the arrows to scroll between all possible templates. There's so many different choices for you to choose from in here. Once you've found the one you like, just tap it to select it. Today, I'm gonna go for a split screen. Now you've chosen a layout, use the encoder to select which frame you're assigning an input to. You'll see these as letters A, B, etc., or BG for background. When one of these frames is highlighted on screen, press one of the six input buttons to assign it to that frame. If you want to use an image or video in a frame, simply press the media button and press one of these pink buttons right here. So on the background, we can place an image like this. These represent the media you've loaded onto your SD card, which we took a look at earlier in the section exploring the scene builder. Tap the media function button again to exit the media menu. Once you've chosen the input or media for that frame, you can turn the encoder again to select a new frame and repeat the process until all frames are assigned. Once you're done, tap the green tick and your scene is ready to go. To save a scene, simply press and hold any of the unlit scene buttons. Now you can switch to it like you would any other input button. 
If all seven of your scene buttons are lit white, just like this, it means they all have a scene allocated to them already. To delete a scene, press the Inspect button, then the Scene button you wish to clear. Next, tap this menu icon in the bottom left of the screen. Click Delete. Then, the green tick to confirm. Remember, when you're building a scene, it isn't saved until you press and hold one of the empty scene buttons, and you see the words Scene Saved on the screen. You can still use a scene you've made, even if it hasn't been saved to a button. But just note that it will be lost if you switch away from it. So make sure to save your scene when you're happy with it. And that's it. Now you've got a better idea of how scenes work and how to build them using Road Central or directly on your Roadcaster video.